temptation. Why would anyone be tempted by what is evil? We don't find ugliness attractive. We don't find corruption attractive. We don't find self-destruction attractive. Why would we be tempted by what is evil? Nobody sits at the dining room table and reaches for the moldy piece of bread, unless maybe there's a dare or a $20 bet. People don't put tongue plugs in their mouths because it's fun, but rather maybe it's the in thing and you can belong to a group who identify themselves this way. Maybe you want to show how tough and strong you are and you need to show that among some peers. Maybe it's a sign of independence. But if somebody just wants something in their mouth, they would chew gum or suck on a marble. Sin is not tempting because it's evil, but rather because it appears good. There's something in it that seems good, that attracts us. To some people, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, is attractive because they're uptight, it lowers their inhibitions, they can just kind of let go and be themselves. And for other people, they're not tempted at all because they want to be in control. The person who robs a bank sees the good of the money. The person who overeats the good of the taste, oh my goodness. The person who cheats on a quiz, it's only because I have to pass this class. The homeless person who commits petty theft because he wants to spend the night in a warm jail. To sin, is to choose what appears good, what seems to be good. If there did not appear to be anything good in it, we would never be tempted to sin. In the Gospel, Jesus is tempted. And in the first temptation, these 40 days of fasting are over. It's complete. It's okay to eat now. And when he's tempted, bread would be good. And you notice the devil doesn't ask some outlandish, why don't you create a cloud that pours water into a cup? You've got to be thirsty. Or this stone looks like it'd be a great turkey dinner, and there's some yams, and that's almost the shape of an apple pie. He doesn't make it outlandish and ridiculous. He makes it look simple and attractive. In the second temptation, Jesus came to save the world and for people to recognize his kingship. And so the devil says, I've got a lot of power in this world. You worship me, give me a little honor, and I'll give it up to you. They'll recognize your kingship. Seems attractive. The third temptation, if he jumps off the parapet of the temple, people would see this, including the religious leaders who will soon be plotting to kill him. And angels are catching him. Maybe his messiahship will be much more believable. All of this is attractive to Jesus. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a temptation. How does he model for us to get through these temptations? Jesus keeps his focus on heaven, on his Father. Because in each one of these, like with the tem first temptation to use his power for himself rather than others, he says, one does not live on bread alone. But as the scripture passage says, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In the second temptation, you will not offer Satan even a second of honor. Instead, he says, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. 
In the third temptation, he will not use the supernatural intervention of angels to impress the world. Instead, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. He keeps his mind focused on his Heavenly Father in the face of these temptations. In the first reading, we had something somewhat similar as far as an example. Moses, this is 40 years after wandering in the desert, and Moses is concerned because just a few months out of Egypt, they could worship a golden calf, and then just a month ago, after 40 years of wandering in the desert, they worship a local god called Baal Peor. And he knows they're going to be going into the promised land, and they're going to be tempted to worship the Canaanite gods. He just knows it. So he says, okay, this is what you're going to do on an annual basis. And he gives them a creed to say, you are going to gather the first fruits of the harvest, and you are going to go to the temple, and you are going to recognize God for His goodness. You're going to keep your focus on God when the wealth is starting to come in. The wealth of the harvest. This is not for you. This is a gift from God out of His abundant love. And keep your annual focus on the one true God. During Lent, for us, it's a time of fasting. And the things we're asked to fast from first is sin. But how do we overcome sin when we can just be overwhelmed with the sweet temptations of what appears to be good? We can follow the example of Jesus and focus on the things of heaven. Focus on Jesus Christ. Look at a crucifix. Look at a picture of Jesus. Look at a picture of mom, dad, grandpa, and grandma who taught us right from wrong and show us fidelity to Jesus Christ. Because in the face of temptation, we grow weak. But if we think of our Heavenly Father, we think of our Jesus, we will draw strength from Him and choose not what appears to be good, but what is good.